Okay, this is my second video on the circle of fifths and uh, how to use it to uh, learn more of music theory and how, of course, you know, you want to take theory into practice uh, because really theory is no good. It's just head knowledge until you put it into practice. But uh, uh, in, this, in this video, we're going to do a couple of things, a couple of things to really uh, get you more familiar with the circle of fifths. Uh, we're looking at this clock right now that has the circle of fifths uh, imprinted on the face of the clock here. But one of the main things that you want to look at with uh, with any type of musical instrument is patterns. You need to be looking for patterns because patterns is what's going to make you uh, advance and it's going to make you a, a better musician faster when you see patterns. For example, in the last video, I talked about seeing this word right here bead on this side as you're learning the circle of fifths. Well, if you'll look at just the opposite, this from the two o'clock position over to the 10 o'clock position, we've got the word bead written this way. Here it's written this way. Here it's written, it's written this way. Okay. So, and they're directly across from each other. Another thing I wanted to mention is that uh, on, I didn't talk too much about the flats uh, the, uh, the, 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 the D flat, A flat, G flat, E flat, and B flat. I didn't talk too much about that in the last video, but what I want to tell you is this, is that whereas in the, uh, uh, we talked about, about these over here, we talked about making the shape. If I write the, I write the letter G, I use one stroke. The G is in the one o'clock position. If I write the letter D, uh, if I write it, I make two strokes to do that. It's in the two o'clock position. These are things that are going to help you to remember. A has three strokes. It's in the three o'clock position. What I want you to see is that on this side over here with the flats, if you have three sharps here with A, then you go directly across to the nine o'clock position on the clock. And E flat actually has three flats. A has three sharps. E flat has three flats. Okay. All right. So it's, it's important to understand this one here uh, with D, with the key of D has two sharps. What are those two sharps? We talked about in the last video, those two sharps would be F and C. You don't count the one, you don't count the fourth, which is the fourth right here. You don't count that, but you go back on the circle of this and you'll know that, that the key of D has two sharps, which are F and C. The key of A, three o'clock position, makes three strokes to, to write the letter. What are the three sharps here? They're F, C, and G. E is four, it's in the four o'clock position. You make four strokes to make, to write the letter E. What four sharps are in the letter E? Go back and start with F, F, C, G, and D are in the, and you can see right here, you can see the sharps written here on this clock, on the face of this clock, the way they've done it, because they've included a uh, diagram here of the treble clef. Okay. So likewise, if you have three, if you're on this side of, of the, on this side, on the, this is actually the sharp side, even though it doesn't show sharps, uh, uh, all of, all of these keys have sharps in them, except for the key of C, which has no sharps or flats. But if A is in the three o'clock position directly across from it, E is in the nine o'clock position, A has three sharps, E has three flats, okay? If you go to the four o'clock position, compare it to the eight o'clock position here, directly across here, uh, E has four sharps, A has four flats. You can see the four right there. You, it, it, you can't see it very well, but it's right in there. You can see there's four flats in there. Same goes for B. B is in the five o'clock position. The letter B looks somewhat like a, a number five. B is in the five o'clock position. It has five, it has five sharps. D flat has five flats. Okay. And this one here, these two keys right here, G flat and F sharp are the same key. And they have either six flats. We can call it six flats or we can call it six sharps. Okay. It's in the six o'clock position. So we look for patterns. Now I want to show you something else that is very interesting on, on this particular diagram uh, that's done for this clock. If you want to buy this clock, by the way, I think you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, just go do a Google search on um, 
uh, circle of fifths clock, and you're going to find this clock, and you can buy it if you want it. One thing that I find interesting also is right here, it has C, E, and G. What is C, E, and G? C, E, and G are the notes in the chord, in the C chord. If you, if you make the C chord, whether you make it on the piano, whether you make it on the guitar, whatever instrument you're able to make a chord on, then the key of C always has the C, the key of C, I mean, I'm sorry, the chord of C major a chord uh, has three notes in it, which is C, E, and G. Okay, that's called a triad. We call it a, we call it a triad. Well, uh, other than other than seeing it right here, what's another way that if we don't have this, we don't have this circle all the way around here, showing us the three notes that are uh, that are in that particular chord. Uh, how can we use a circle of fifths to know that? Well, let's look for a pattern. Where do we see C, E, and G? We see C here. E is the third of C. E is a third of C. And so it's it's the first, the third, and the fifth that make up the chord. Okay? So C, E, and G, C, E, and G. Let's look at G right here. What about the G major chord? Well, the G major chord is made up of a G, B, and a D. What about the D major chord? It's made up of a D, an F sharp, and an A. What about the A major chord? It's made up of an A, a C sharp, and an E, okay? And so you see that right here, A, C sharp, and E. They're showing it here, but what I'm telling you is, is that if you don't have this, which most of the diagrams that I see drawn of the circle of fifths don't have this, this uh, particular circle right here that shows you how to make a chord. So if you're sitting at the piano and you want to make the C chord, you're going to push down with your thumb, you're going to push down C, and then with your middle finger, you're going to push down E and G. You play that together, you've got a C chord. How, how can I use the circle of fifths again to know that? I know it by simply C, E, and G. Okay? Those are the three notes. That's the triad. It's called a triad. Uh, those are the three notes that make up the C major chord. So what about the F chord? With the F chord, we have we have three notes F A C. You see it right here. But what's another way? To, if you don't have this, what's another way to know what three notes make up the F chord? Well, F A C. It will be the first, the third, and the fifth. The fifth of F is C. We learned that in the last video. The fourth is B flat. The fifth is C. Okay. So if we want to make up this, where does this FAC come from? It comes from right here. This 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 pattern right here. Okay. Where is the where is the CEG? It's in this pattern right here. Where is the GBD that makes up the G chord? Where is it? It's this pattern right here. Okay. Where is the D? Uh, uh, the D chord. That's it's going to be D F and D F sharp and A. Where is that at? It's going to be in this pattern right here. A is going to be A, C sharp, and E. Uh, e is going to be E, G sharp, and B. And so on all the way around, around the circle of fifths. So that's another way to use the circle of fifths to determine what notes are in a chord. Now, let me tell you something that's going to save you a whole lot of time. You say, what if I want to play the C minor chord here? What if I don't want to play C major and I want to play C minor? It's very simple. What you do is you take the third down a half step. So this would be C, E flat, and G would make the C minor chord. What if I want a G minor chord? Okay, this this chord here. What if I want a G minor chord? Very simple. All right. Uh, first of all, the G major chord is G, B, and D. The G minor chord would be G. Uh, uh, B flat and D. Okay, you f what we say we you flat the third. You flat the third. Flatting when we say flat, we flat it. What, what I'm saying is uh, is that we we take it down one uh, half step, or in the UK they call it a semitone. Okay, so how can we make how can we make major chords again? How do we get this C, E, and G? If this is not here and I don't, ha I'm not, I don't have this to look at, how can I commit this to memory? Well, I know that it's the, it's the first, which is C, which is our root note. 
C major chord would be our root note C with our third and our fifth right here. And, and this pattern follows all the way around the entire circle of fifths. You'll come up with every major chord that, that, uh, that, that exists. And then if you'll just simply flat the third, take the flat, the third down of one semitone or one half step, as we say in America, if you just flat the third, then you're going to get C minor. So look for patterns. Look for patterns. Let me, let me talk to you about this one more time again. You see this pattern here? If I'm playing in the key of A, what are my three main major chords? What are my three major chords in the key of A? A, D, and E. All right? A, D, and E. Well, you see these patterns of A, E, A, D, and E. You see that here. But even inside, even over here, A, A flat, D, and E. It's the same thing. A, D, E, A flat, D flat, E flat. Okay? Inside here, with the relative minor chords. And again, let me just say this. I said this in the last video. But these six chords right here, these three out here, and then these three right here, are most of the chords that you'll ever need to play in the key of C. Okay? But you see the pattern here. Even in the minor chords, A, D, and E, A, D, and E, a, D, and E. Okay, it's there. What if, I'm, what if I'm in the key of G? I've got G, C, and D. I see it here. I see <clears throat> here, this would be a D flat, would be a C sharp here. But it's, it's true all the way around the circle of fifths. Okay, so if you didn't see my first video, uh, uh, my kind of my introduction to the circle of fifths, you need to find that video and watch that video because it's going to explain a lot to you how you can use the circle of fifths uh, to uh, make yourself a better uh, a musician. And uh, if you're a soloist, you're a vocalist, uh, it's going to help you in, in understanding more music theory, uh, which is going to help you uh, in, in your skills and in your performances and everything else that you do. Okay, so this video is about how to use the circle of fifths to uh, to create, to construct major chords and minor chords. Minor chords are very simple. You just flat the third, flat the third. You take the third down one half step or one semitone. Okay. Hope that helps you and happy playing.